Hello, this is the TradeSite U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for Thursday, September 14th, 2017, and Friday, September 15th, which will be options triple expiration for the month of September and the end of the quarter for options. Uh, as usual, we don't typically do market previews for Fridays as most of the week is played out. Everything we've been looking at and analyzing is uh, wrapping up. And of course, that's not usually no exception for a options expiration where it's really wrapping up. Uh, we just went through what had to have been one of the dullest days of the year in the stock market. It was very disappointing. If they stuck options unraveling in there somehow, it was hard to spot it. So that maybe means we still have that for Thursday. But man, we'll take a look at that intraday action in a minute. It was just horrible. Here's the ES front month futures contract. This is the daily chart of the broad market futures form. And uh, not much new to say there. Let's go through the major indices and then we'll talk about what happened yesterday and what's coming for the rest of the week. So crude oil. Uh, up a dollar twenty, a dollar twelve to forty nine thirty five. Uh, gold down six dollars and sixty cents. Not a big deal there. S and P up a point, up one dollar. And by the way, you'll see it. The E S was in basically less than a five point range almost the whole day. Oh, the whole day, the whole day. That almost never happens. N D X up eight. Socks up one. Literally one point. Biotech's down thirteen point five four. Still in this. High range base formation. It's either going to break the moving average and fall or break out. Take your pick. The VIX closes at uh, 1050, back down a bit. Now, here's the interesting one the trend closing at 0.74. That takes that 10 day moving average down to the lowest it's been in almost uh, a year, or at least back to January, uh, at 0.93. And let me count backwards 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, tomorrow, whatever number we get tomorrow is going to erase a one point. Uh, about a 1.35 reading on the trend from the moving average. So if tomorrow's number is low, let's say again at 0.74 and you erase a 1.35, that's going to take that 10-day moving average down quite a bit more. And remember, when the 10-day moving average of the trend closes at 0.85 or less, that's usually a sell signal on the broad market. We haven't had that for a while. We certainly haven't had it at all this year. But we've had some signals out there uh, recently, and that would be another one to add to the mix. By the way, I'll just go back to the NDX, the NASDAQ 100 here real quick. Uh, and let this load up because we are still operating under a 13 sell signal here on the NDX for whatever reason the chart's not populating that but there is a there it is 13 sell signal so that's still in place and if you get this trend reading on top of it, it could get real interesting Nasdaq volume was high partially due to some Apple volume 1.9 billion shares advanced decline ratio on the Nasdaq plus uh, 379 pretty decent I'm sorry plus 232 pretty decent uh, advanced declaration of the NASDAQ on New York plus 147. Google was up a dollar or three dollars and seventy nine cents. That's a blip for Google. Apple down after their uh, conference yesterday, down 121. Amazon gained seventeen dollars and two cents. That's a decent gain for them. Back near a thousand. Netflix down 151 after being on the rise the last few days. Tesla up three dollars and forty eight cents, looking for a little breakout. Remember, this one had a strange 13 buy signal the other day. Weird location for that. TLT, the 20 year bond ETF, closes down 50 cents. Goldman Sachs back up 61 cents. All right, let's look at this intraday action just so you can see. Look at how flat this is. I mean, I thought, you know, the day before, uh, Monday's afternoon was totally flat after a rise over lunch. And then yesterday we gapped up on Tuesday. And I thought that overall day was fairly flat, but that had, you know, six, six and a half points of range for the day. Here we didn't even do that. And if you look at it very carefully, I mean, almost the entire day is between uh, 24 and 90. And 24.94, so four point range, except for two candles over lunch and two candles at the close. Yikes, that is one flat day, basically untra untradeable. The futures made us a little money early, and then the rest of the day is untradeable from the futures perspective. We did have a couple stops, stocks work out early, but man, that's just that's not what you want to see. Not obviously an options unraveling move. Here's the NASDAQ again. This one, look at that spike right at the close. I mean, if it wasn't for that. We were dead flat for the day. We we're actually negative a point. All right, so let's take a look at the data. Or let's discuss the data that's coming out for the rest of the week and get a picture of what's coming. So we've got the consumer price index, the CPI, and and the uh, weekly initial jobless claims numbers and continuing claims numbers. Uh, an hour before the bell on Thursday, we've got the Bloomberg Consumer Comfort Index at 9:45. We've got the weekly Natty Gas report an hour into the market at 10:30. And then on Friday, we've got retail sales and the Empire State Manufacturing Survey an hour before the bell. Capacity utilization and industrial production 15 minutes before the bell. 
business inventories and consumer sentiment 30 minutes into the market. And again, remember, this is triple expiration. So we're already rolled our futures to the December contracts. That's what we're trading. But those September contracts for futures, the options and for commodities all expire on Friday. So that's usually a dead day in the market for that triple expiration. I don't know how it could be any more dead than what we saw today, but whatever. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken the trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple weeks. Have a great trading uh, Thursday and Friday and a great weekend.